While scrolling through YouTube, recently I found this video. How to measure AC current using AC S712 sensor with Arduino. Seems pretty promising. He used an AC S712 current sensor, an Arduino and little bit of programming. The problem in this video is how he measures power in watts. As a load, what he measures to be specific an incandescent light bulb. From his side, he is absolutely correct. What he should have mentioned is that while measuring AC power, we are not actually multiply voltage and current. What we do is voltage times current times power factor. The power factor of an incandescent light bulb is basically 1 because it's a resistive load. So he is correct from his side. But what if I connect something different like LED bulb or a smartphone charger? Now the power factor would not be as same as 1. Why? Well, that's the topic of today's video. Today we will discuss what is power factor, how we can measure it and how it influences the power consumption while measuring AC power. So let's start from the beginning. What is power? In DC current, power is basically the multiplication of voltage and current. If I consume 2 amp on 12 volt, the power consumption would be 12 into 2 equals to 24 watts. While the DC has only one type of power who actually does the job, AC has two. One of them is real or active power where the load consumes the power and does the work. The other type is reactive power which is due to capacitive or inductive loads. That doesn't do any work at home and apparently the net active power draw by these components is zero. So you don't worry about paying for that reactive power. But the downside is it results more current flow through the power lines and ultimately more power losses. For example, if a load requires 1 ampere to do the job because it's an inductive load, it will draw 1.5 ampere of current. But the extra 0.5 ampere is a reactive power. So you will no need to pay for that. But it loads the power lines. We always want the power factor to be 1 so that all the transmitted power is used. The combination of active and reactive power is known as apparent power. What those guys are measuring on YouTube is apparent power, not the real power. We definitely can develop a circuitry that can measure real power. But for now, let's measure the real power with an oscilloscope and learn little bit of calculations. As an example load, I am taking this 18 watt LED bulb. As for my power meter, it has the power factor of 0.98. By the way, in the ideal situation, the voltage and current are in phase. In inductive loads, current is lagging behind the voltage. With capacitive loads, voltage is lagging behind the current. Anyway, let's configure the load with my oscilloscope. We have to configure it with this scheme. Very dangerous. One wrong move, either I will be electrocuted or the oscilloscope will just explode. Basically, to configure this setup, either I need an isolation transformer or an isolated probes. But the isolated probes, aka differential probes are more costlier than my oscilloscope. So I don't use them. To measure the current, I will pass the load through a 1 ohm sun resistor. The advantage of 1 ohm resistor is if the voltage drop across the resistor is 0.2 volt then the current draw would be 0.2 amps or 200 milliamps. Basically the simple reason is I could easily measure and calculate it. That's why I have used an 1 ohm resistor. Now the light is glowing and oscilloscope is measuring the waveforms. Now see the current is little bit shifted from the voltage. And the reason of this noise is, these LED bulbs uses switch mode power supplies. Anyway, let's measure the time differences of voltage and current at zero crossing point. I have triggered my oscilloscope's cursor function and measure the time differences which is 800 microseconds. Of course, the measurement is done for one AC cycle which for 50Hz AC completes in 0.02 seconds. We know the power factor is cos theta. Theta is the phase difference. To calculate the phase difference, we have this formula, delta T by T into 360. Delta T is the time delay between the voltage and current waveforms, 
which in my case is 800 microseconds aka 0.0008 seconds. Capital T is the time period of the waveforms, which is 0.02 seconds for 50 Hz AC. For 60 Hz AC, the time period would be 1 by 60 equals to 0.0166 seconds. Let's calculate the equation. Now we know the value of theta. Phase difference 14.4. Cosine of 14.4 would be 0.97. So the power factor is 0.97. So the real consumed power of the 18 watt bulb is voltage times current times cosine of 14.4 equals to 15.8 watt. My power meter also verifies that the power factor measurement of mine is correct and power meter also says that the bulb is 15.6 watt not 18 watt. That's how you have to measure the AC power, not just multiplying voltage and current like DC. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video and learned something new. If so, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe and activate the notification bell for future updates. Thank you so much.